Your, your lips are boosted. It is. It's quite trouty. Yeah. Trouty pouty. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, as a gas and electric bills continue to soar, Phil Vickery is helping us out. Phil, you're going to cook two meals for Two meals in real time. Using your microwave. And the microwave. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Here they are. So we're doing a uh, little bit of a cake there, a sort of stroke pudding with a bit of oh, ice cream. And then a little risotto with some fresh mint and frozen broad beans. Dead simple. Right, and let's crack on here. Here's the finished cake. I want to try and cook this in real time. So that's going to go in now for five minutes. Right, so okay. Hope. On we go. So it literally takes five minutes. Yeah. A cake. That should go in five minutes. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no pressure. Now, whilst, whilst that's cooking, let's talk about risotto. Now, risotto, you put in a pan normally, stir it around, you put mm -hmm. your onions in, your garlic, blah, 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 your wine. Here's a really quick one, and it cooks in around about 10 minutes. Give or take a couple of minutes each way. Now, what, the, the important thing to remember is the water needs to be boiling, and you need to take it out at three minute stages in the, mm -hmm. on the 700 watt microwave, give a quick stir, and keep going. So, actually, you incorporate mm. it all the time. Very simple. Here, Good. risotto mm -hmm. rice in a bowl, microwavable bowl, one onion. In that goes, or one and a half onions, up to you. A couple of cloves of garlic, in that goes. And I do put a stock cube, it's a vegetable stock cube, give a bit of background flavour, huh? sprinkle nice. that on top, like that. A little bit of salt, not too much, because you've got um, a bit of cheese to go later, and also your stock cube, pepper, in that goes. And you want about 750 to 800 mils of boiling water on top, like that. Boiling water, which you'd have pre boiled in your microwave. Or your new kettle. Right. <laughs> actually, you could do it, actually. Yeah, but come. A little touch of oil in there, help it along. Then you cover that with cling film. OK, and you, again, this goes... I'll give a quick stir, actually, before we put that in, just to make sure it's all incorporated, which it is. You then pop that into your microwave and set it for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. This one here. This is crazy. After 10 minutes, and I'll stir this two or three times, you end up... Well, it, this way it looks So right. it's 10 minutes, but you keep going back every three minutes? It's up to you. It depends on the, on the strength of your microwave. Right. And if right. it's cooking evenly or it's not cooking, some don't move, some don't have a turntable. Yes. So just keep an eye on it. Okay. okay. At the 10 minute stage, roughly, you'll get to this, what we've got this one here. You'll see that there, mm. like that. It's really absorbed all the water. Mm. It has. Now, at that point, you might add a touch more boiling water or oil. It's up to you. You're, you just need to look at it. If you don't want it too dry, Gage you want a super yeah. consistency. Now, I've got one down here. That's at the 10 minute stage. This is one that I've adjusted slightly. Okay. Here it is. So I put some more butter into there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want, that soft consistency. Right. Now, all I've done between that and that is add water. Right. OK? And you just want to keep it a nice, creamy consistency. Mm -hmm. OK, just keep an eye on it. Then to finish it, I've got broad beans here. Now, these are frozen broad beans, which are defrosted. Already, uh, cooked. already cooked. So they can go in at the start, if you want, halfway through, or in the end. I'm just going to put mine in here at the end, because I know that these are they're all defrosted anyway. Just fold those for you. That's what you've got there. Then fresh mint. That's what the mint is so you want nice it? In it's there. fresh mm. mint. And then I do add a little touch of butter, not a lot, just because I want to give it a glossy texture and flavour. Mm -hmm. And then obviously parmesan, which I've grated here. Now I've got mozzarella, which yours I've just popped on top because I do want to stir it's it so in. Baby nice. mozzarella. And it, it is a question of just keeping an eye on it. Keep adding moisture. Don't worry about too much. It will always soak up the moisture. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, I put 750 mils of water in there. Just keep it soft, OK? Even that one there will come back. Just add water. OK. In that goes. And then I put mozzarella into here, like that. And then I have tasted it, so I know where we are. I will put some more pepper and a little touch of uh, the salt in there as well. And that's the so, consistency. So is that it? Or does it have to go back in now? That's it. Oh my god. 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. Now, because... this golden rule of any microwave cookery, including the cake, look at that, yeah. is to let it rest for the same amount of time you cook it for. Uh. I say it all the time. Mm -hmm. And that will absorb the flavour, the texture will change, and it will settle down. So well, this... Will it not go cold? No, no not if it's covered with cling film. I made this, I made this 10 minutes ago. It's quite a hard thing to get right if you're cooking it not in a microwave. Yeah, yeah. Right? This Cooking makes one. it seem really easy. Could you, could you do this with other, other flavours? Anything you like. Or... Anything you like. Prawns, a bit of chopped pork, a bit of ham, whatever you want to do. But it has to have that what I call melting consistency. You see that moving? Yeah. That's mm. what we're asking. It's that, it's that sort of gooey look, yeah. isn't it? Now, if it doesn't do that, just add water to it. Let it set for a minute and it will soak it up. Be patient. Soon. <laughs> right. I'm going to let that set for a second, so it's going to be quite hot. Oh, my God. Here's the cake. Now, in this Pyrex bowl here, mm -hmm. I've got a piece of paper underneath so you can lift it out. Right. It's quite delicate when it's, co it's cooked. One chopped banana. Very easy. Now, you can chuck it always in a food processor or in a mixer and whizz it up. The only thing I would say was be slightly careful of mixing it too quickly, because once you add flour to a cake, it becomes quite heavy. Yeah. And it's quite chewy. Even mm -hmm. the Victoria sponge can be chewy because the gluten in the flour. So don't go mad. OK. So what I do is add the eggs. In they go. One chopped banana, in that goes. 
Mm. Uh, ground almonds, optional extra. I like the, the, the uh, oiliness of the oil. Oh, yeah, ice cream. Two chocolate Thank chips, in much. they go. Just give that a quick Sorry. mix. You just nudge that off. Like that. Yeah. Let's get rid of this. Flour goes in at the last second. You don't have to be too worried about what it looks like. You're just making a, a mixture, a sponge mixture. Now, it's, you think it's not going to work. Persevere, and it, suddenly the whole thing will come together. It's a nice, there you go. Like that. And whilst you're mixing that, I'm just going to talk away. through uh, some of these stats yep. because what it could save you. So, a recent study has found that households who primarily cook with an oven could save up to £604 a year mm -hmm. by using more energy efficient cooking methods. Uh, the research revealed that using a microwave only costs £30 a year, mm -hmm. while an electric oven costs £316 for exactly the same time period. Exactly. So, this, it really is money saving. Mm. Here's, right? a great here's a great stat for you, Rochelle, before we go any further. Yeah. These two dishes came in, ever guess how much it cost to make them, electricity wise? I guess Both all, all together Both or separately? Of Both of them. 5.50. Yeah. 10 uh, pence. No. 10 pence of electricity. Here it is, cooked in real time. Look at look that. that. Oh, my God. Now, it you worked. Need, see, look, you need to the rest. You need... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what do you mean, bud? <laughs> We're all surprised. I'm a bit sceptical. I'll be honest with you, Phil. <laughs> I can't you believe see, it. <laughs> that needs to, see, that needs to rest because it's still slightly undercooked, which you want. Yeah. The residual heat will carry on cooking that. Bear in mind, the microwave cooks from the inside out. Not right. the way around. Let it set. This is one I've got here. You'll see, I'll just cut that now. Then, well, I made this just for you, kind of there. I haven't even tried the cake yet. I'm there it is. Now, I, I do... It does need a sauce, or it does need lots and lots yeah, of... Yeah, I'll be honest with you, it's a bit heavy. It is, it is, but you're in a microwave. Right. You've got to remember that. OK. Remember that. Savage. <laughs> oh, well, you know, honesty is the best policy. No, not with the ice cream. No, no, well... Yeah. It needs ice cream and it does need a sauce. Yeah. However, the point I'm making is that you can actually do it, provided you do it correctly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for around and about ten pence, you can't go wrong. And Absolutely with the ice cream not. and the chocolate, uh, it does taste. It's more like really a pudding, good. isn't it? It is, yeah. And, uh, and I'm glad you like that, Michelle. Mm. I really. <laughs> I liked it. I really liked and it. Was it. Waste, it was a waste of time, wasn't it? There we go. Come to you. Well, right, anyway, the shall we do it for the detail? Um, <laughs> yes. Shall we do that? Shall we? <laughs> Thanks very much. Phil. Thanks, Michelle. Always a pleasure. <laughs> OK, for details of today's recipe and more delicious oh, ideas from our chefs, download our free This Morning app.